In section 10.3, we want to be able to conduct a hypothesis test, but this time for a population mean, a single mean for a single population. In chapter 11, that'll be double means. We'll deal with that then. All right. Now, I apologize in fall of 2020. I must have been too impatient when making these PDFs because you can see it says loading all over the place, which are all the equations that we're loading. So don't panic. It's actually available in your exam notes packet. So in this semester, it's page 268. That might change in whatever semester you're watching this video in, but go find it. It'll be part of the exam notes packet. And I apologize. I will fix that. So, and I already have fixed it. So here's um, the page in the notes from chapter 10. And you can see, well, this looks very familiar, right? It looks like the same six steps we were doing for the hypothesis test for a proportion, but there are some distinctions. So back up here in the requirements, these are the requirements that were from section 8.1. This is the central limit theorem, but for means. And the big difference, of course, is that the normal piece Instead of n, p, q being greater than 10, we need n to be bigger than 30 or have a graph that shows that it's normal with no outliers. That's the big difference between the two. Another big difference is, of course, the calculator piece that you're using. Instead of one prop z test, you're using t test. So again, that's on the TI 84, but StatCrunch folks, it kind of helps to segment in your mind like what you're doing. And so this is not all that bad just to know that it's a t-test and that's what you're looking for in StatCrunch. All right, so we establish our mean related hypotheses, right? So less than, not equal to, greater than. We have our lovely uh, t test statistic formula, which is the difference divided by the standard error. And we would use that formula for standard error. And then all of this is pretty much the same, except it uses t's because of course we don't know sigma. We cannot use z's. These are not z curves. These are t curves, which means we're going to need our degree of freedom. Well, we don't actually need it because the calculator will figure it all out for us, but these would have degrees of freedom. They're not identical. They change based on what your deg degrees of freedom is for that particular problem. All right, let's actually do a problem and that'll help cement it all in our heads. <laughs> all right, so we have the average credit score in 2019 in the US was 703. This is actual um, a number in case you're wondering, it came from a real data source. So a researcher for Capital One Banks believes, or Capital One Bank believes the credit score for their customers is different than this value. They gather the following credit scores for a random group of Capital One customers. Yes, these are real data as well. Um, there are 19.6 million Capital One customers. Um, this data set is available on StatCrunch. I'm actually going to change that link so that way you can tell what it is. It's 10.3 notes example one, so EX1. So if you look this up, actually, if you just look up 133, 10.3, you'll find this data set. Sorry, I had the wrong data set label. This is the correct data set. So it has the credit scores, 769, 621, 767, and so on. All right, now we want to first verify that the conditions um, to conduct a hypothesis test are met. All right, those conditions would be, of course, the same ones that we learned from the central limit theorem. We need random, independent of the population, and normal. All right, so let's start with number one, random, the easiest one by far, because it's given. If it's not given, it's going to be safe to assume it, because we can't really do anything if it's not. So this would be yes given. Number two would be independent of the population. All right, well, let's see here. There are 19.6 million Capital One customers, and they did a random group here of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times two is 28. So you'll notice Actually, I'll make a little comment over here. Just a little note for ourselves. Okay, so is n, which is 28, less than 0.05 of capital N, which would be 0 0.05 times 19.6 million? Well, yes, <laughs> right? That's definitely going to be the case. Let me prove it. 0 0.05 times 19, 6, 1, or five zeros, right? So it's 
zero 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 six. That makes six into the six hundred thousand range. And there we go. So this would be nine eight nine hundred eighty thousand. Yes, 28 is definitely less than 980,000, right? Remember that the millions place would move this decimal six spots over to the right. So it's six followed by five zeros. And that's where that comes from. That's a zero. So that's a yes, right? That's no problem. Definitely less than that. And number three, normal. Now I realized as I was looking at this, this is not the right um, normal probability plot. I messed up. I don't know what I was doing. So um we're going to have to just kind of wing it at this point by looking at the real one, which I have in StatCrunch, of course. So I did this by taking my credit scores and I just made a QQ plot. So I can show you how to do it. We did it back in chapter seven. And of course, you don't ever really have to build these by hand or with StatCrunch even because I always do it. But just in case you're wondering, click credit score, QQ plot. I like to click normal quantiles on the Y axis and click compute. There's, that's the actual graph, and I'm going to put that in the notes for future. <laughs> so that will be the graph that's on there. For right now, just pretend that it's on there and say this is a yes. Why? Well, because that graph, the graph we could see on StatCrunch, the points are mostly linear, and there's no real outliers. If I want to back up the no outliers thing, I can do a box plot and click box plot. Remember box plots? It was a long time ago. So if I click box plot and click compute, I can see, yep, there's no outliers. So the dots are linear. There's no outliers. Hooray. You can kind of see there's no outliers just by looking at the normal probability plot anyway, the QQ plot. All right. So yes, because the graphs points are linear. I'm going to put ish. You know, they're linear-ish. Right? with no outliers. Okay. And again, I will fix that so it's the correct graph, but that graph actually looks a lot like the correct one anyway. And remember, we have to have that graph because our n is less than 30. If our n was greater than 30, we could just say n greater than 30, be done. But n is less than 30, so we need a normal probability plot to basically show us, quote unquote, that the data set is from a normal distribu normally distributed population. 